Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, 360 Creative Coach, and welcome to my vlog where it's my mission and pleasure to highlight my creative journey. Uh, so that way you get some takeaways as well as hopefully inspiration uh, for your own endeavors. Before I get into things, I would like to take the opportunity to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. That way you get all the various lessons and episodes that I put out right when I put them out. Thank you if you just did, and thank you if you already were. It means a lot to me. So I'm going to focus on two things uh, creatively that, that have been kind of going on. And the first one is, is the longer aspect. You know, I'm going to spend a lot of time and there's going to be a lot of subsections. And that's uh, my um, planning for my second feature film uh, called In Search of Sunrise. And, you know, I, if you listened last week, I talked about how I was going to have a production meeting. Well, that happened last week. That was Tuesday of last week. And, you know, going into it, I had sort of an outline of the things I wanted to accomplish, things I wanted to talk about. And, you know, after that, it was kind of the action steps, right? So, you know, one of the things, and as I kind of look at things nowadays, obviously it's very, I think that Zoom can, even though you see people and things like that, sometimes can be a terrible medium. And I think a lot of things can get lost in quote translation. And that I felt like some of that was evident. Um, you know, part of it was, it was right after the week of Thanksgiving. So people, it's one of those things like, you know, most people's jobs, I feel like tell them, hey, don't uh, don't worry about this. We'll we'll do it all. You know, after Thanksgiving, enjoy the holiday. You know, kind of take it easy. Blah blah blah. And then the, the you know Monday after Thanksgiving, all of a sudden it's like, hey, uh, we we need that report. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We just we just it's, it's Monday. We just got back. Like, hold on. There's there's a whole slew of things. So, you know, I felt like people were kind of playing catch up at their jobs, and you know, mentally, even though it was Tuesday, they kind of in some sense were were drained a little bit going into this meeting. Uh, so overall, I think that brought the energy down a little bit. Uh, and, you know, part of it is, I think it's one of those things, like, especially with this script, you know, I was talking with, with somebody uh, yesterday, and I think th this is one of the one of those projects that it's it's kind of hard to wrap your head around if you don't you know it's in my head in terms of visually you know what it's going to look like it's in my head obviously you know what the story is and you know whether or not everything's made it to the script or not I I understand the things in my head whereas other people have to obviously see it within the script and then you know from there be able to interpret it so it's a little bit difficult and in that sense you know i think it speaks to kind of like a larger thing is sometimes people don't get on board with something until it's real uh, which is a shame because in this aspect you know i think the people that i really wanted to work with on this and not not saying i'm not going to but i was if i'm being honest i was i was expecting a little bit more enthusiasm uh, in this initial call, and again, that could, part of that could be just my misinterpretation because of Zoom. Uh, it could be just because you know of the circumstances of the work week. Obviously, we're still in uh, you know this pandemic, so that weighs heavily on people, and and you know not everyone's not always bringing their best selves to things in, in spite of perhaps wanting to. But for some reason, I just. You know, I, I didn't leave with the best feeling. And I wonder, I, I asked myself why. You know, why, why did I do that? Because, you know, in a sense, one of the things that they were kind of pushing me towards was to get, to try to get this, uh, a budget of $100,000 for this movie. And part of that, you know, my, my uh, opposition towards that is, of course, like, that's a lot of money. And, and especially like, you know, for me in a pandemic, it's like a lot of this will probably have to be raised through friends and family and things of that nature and asking people for money in the current circumstances. 
you know, is, is a lot. Um, and so like, you know, I had just a, a gut reaction just to that. Uh, cause for me, I, I, you know, I would go for more like 10 or 20,000. Um, but they want to make this in the right way. And, and, and that's, that's the good thing. Right. And, and, you know, in that sense, as I thought about it the next day, it's like, you know, this is a worthwhile challenge. And even if let's say we don't get a hundred thousand, we get 90,000 or whatever the case may be, that certainly escalates it, you know, then, then 10 or 20. Right. So meaning if you, if you aim really, really high, even if you fail, well, you've, you've failed higher than you would have if you, you know, had a, 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 a smaller goal and actually accomplished that goal. Right. So, you know, in some sense, it's, it's like a James Cameron quote, uh, I, I'm paraphrasing it terribly, but yeah, if, if you, if you have high ambitions, even when you fail, you'll fail, uh, higher than most people ever succeed. Right. That's that kind of principle. And again, I'm paraphrasing, but, um, it's a James Cameron quote. So I, you know, the next day I, I shifted my mentality and I was like, you know what, this is a worthwhile pursuit part of, you know, if I really break it down and if I want to like get this made and get that money, well, let me look at, let me kind of look at in terms of blocks, meaning, you know, can I take out a good chunk of this, you know, a hundred thousand dollar goal, uh, via production companies, you know, are there production companies that would be willing to partner with me and, and, you know, give a good chunk of this, if not all of it, you know, maybe one or two, and we can, we can get this thing, you know, a, a huge percentage of it financed. Great. Okay. Then, you know, what, what uh, are there grants? You know, so I looked at grants. Uh, I also am looking at charities, you know, there's uh, certain aspects of the movie that, that are inherent to the script that I think can speak to some charities and it's like, okay, well, would it be of interest to them to back this movie? You know, and can we get some money in that way uh, to get, you know, help spread their message? So it's all these different things. And then of course, then you have, you know, friends and family. And then in that, in the true sense, like a true crowdfunding aspect and so forth. So I kind of looked at it in, in terms of those tiers. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's a worthwhile exercise to go through and, and worthwhile pursuit and expands my, my base of knowledge and, you know, perhaps a base of people. So I look at that and it's like, okay, cool. And, you know, one of the things that, as I kind of think about it, I was like, well, you know, still, why do I have this bad kind of sense of, of that meaning? I don't know. It, it just, again, I'm, I'm just being honest. And part of it was, again, that, that sort of, I just felt like that lack of a, it, it just, I wasn't getting any of the enthusiasm that I would have hoped for. And, you know, these are people that, that I love and trust. So it does hurt. Because for me, like, I, cause I look at, I, I think, you know, as far as delivering a message, like if I was, you know, I, I look at myself and if I was saying to someone, Hey, like this, this movie is deserving of a, but, uh, of a good budget you should really aim for it's word choice, it's inflection, it's mannerisms, it's all these things. So I, you know, I would try to do it on a high energy version and get, get people pumped up. Um, rather than this was just kind of like, it was almost like, well, if, at least again, I, I, I don't want to be unfair to the people. So, so this is kind of, you know, as I interpret it. Right. And, uh, you know, sometimes there is that dissonance, like you, you, you know, what you perceive is not always the reality. So I get that. And so I just want to be clear about that. But for me, it felt like this is what kind of has to happen. Otherwise it's not a real movie, not verbatim, but just, you know, tonally, spiritually, perhaps. That's kind of how I felt about it, was, was feeling about it. And so, you know, I think it's just a nice reminder in life to, you know, for me, and I also, by extension, kind of saying to you, is words and, and energy matters, right? How you want to deliver a message, you know, it doesn't mean don't be honest, but it, you know, there is a way to deliver that message in a way it can be received better. Um, and, and, the, and then kind of the other thing, so based off of that, you know, I was talking with somebody because 
you know, it, it did get my head kind of in a place of like, well, are people just really not enthusiastic about it? Do I just kind of scrap it and make it a, a book instead? And that way, you know, it'll be far easier, far cheaper. Um, not that a book is easy by any stretch of the imagination, but at least like it's, you know, I'm not necessarily dependent on others in that way. And again, just being honest about the situation in terms of how it was or how I felt. But again, I, I, I spoke with a friend and, and they were saying like, of course, it, you know, it can be done. Like, it, it's kind of interesting in the sense that the script itself is very internal. But there's a lot of visual aspects to it that just would make for great imagery. And so it's like, well, half of it would be really great for a book. Half of it's really great for a movie. So it can kind of go both ways, right? If you make it into a book, the challenge is how, then translating the visuals that would be seen on the screen. You know, they have to be written out so people can get that mental image. But as far as the internal struggle, obviously that becomes easy because it's a book and you can write internal dialogue and so forth. Whereas with a movie, short of, you know, doing VO, it's a lot harder to capture that. And I certainly don't want to just, you know, do an expose dump of, here's how the main character's feeling. You know, whether it's their internal monologue or, you know, a, a, an omniscient narrator. I'm not interested in that. So I think it's a cop-out, right? But, you know, I set out to make the movie and, and it is worthwhile and so what, what my friend was kind of saying is, you know, we're going to do a meeting next week. And the advice that I got was to, I got to really set the tone. And rather than kind of, because eh, my thing is, you know, I, part of it was I, I always want things to be a collaboration and things like that. And so I'm looking for input and things like, I never, you know, one of my things is I never want to be dictatorial or come off that way. And, you know, this is a good lesson for me where, you know, I might have opened the door and, you know, just the reason why I was getting the reaction was not because of them, but because of I create confusion. Um, and I need to instead set the tone and so forth. And much like I'm saying there's a way uh, to deliver things, I think I, any of the grievances that I've spoken about ultimately, I guess in that sense, fall on me because I, I, I you know, how... I can set a tone without being di dictatorial and so forth. And I didn't do that. So moving forward, you know, in this, so, you know, we have a next Tuesday meeting. So not this coming Tuesday, but, um, but the 15th, we're going to have a follow-up and, you know, I'm going to check in and see where people are and set the tone. And part of my tone is that one of the things that I like, and I was actually talking with my fr friend James Lott Jr. about this. Because he's someone like me who's doing various projects and, you know, it's the analogy of like a train, you know, uh, we're going to do these projects regardless of kind of, you know, whoever obviously we want people on board, but, you know, if they're on the fence, this train is going, there's going to be stops where they can get on the train, but they got to get on the train because it's going to keep going. And so that's the tone I want to set is that no matter what happens, you know, if people want to be on board, great. Like this, this is going to be a movie and we'll get it made. And, you know, people are either on board or they're not. And if they're not, that's fine. You know, they just need to be honest with themselves as much as they need to be, you know, like forget being honest with me. They just need to be honest about to themselves before they can even begin to fathom being honest to me about it. Right. So I think there's that aspect of it. Um, and yeah, part, part of setting that tone is like, okay, you know, here's what I would like to do have done by X, Y, and Z, uh, and so forth, you know, just being, being very direct in terms of what my expectations are, yada, yada, yada. So that's kind of, you know, overall where we're at. Now, in terms of the specifics, you know, the next day as part of that, I was like, okay, let me um, look at this you know, this a hundred thousand dollar budget, you know, it is a good step up. And, and if, and if it feels like I fear it or I'm like, and it, my gut reaction was like, ah, oh, F this, it's like, well, maybe this is a worthwhile pursuit. Right. And so I wanted to really embrace it. And so I, you know, one of the things I did, I looked up all these sort of movies 
that are comparable to mine in terms of budget, in terms of tone and so forth, and looked at the production companies that were making them, you know, went through my entire contact list of people that I know and said, you know, are they someone that could be a potential producing partner? Are they someone who can make a connection? Are they someone who can, you know, make an investment and all these different things, right? So I made a whole uh, Google Excel spreadsheet of all of this, uh, took notes and so forth, and was very comprehensive. And all in all, came up with a list of about 400 people, uh, companies, and so forth in all of this. Now, I haven't reached out yet. Uh, my it, my thing with this is, you know, I want to have the script fully finalized. I want to have all the pitching material. So a one sheet, a pitch deck, uh, a budget, uh, a, even like a, a presentational video, let's say, uh, of this. And, you know, a link to the trailer of my first movie so they kind of see me as a filmmaker and all these different things, right? So a nice package, if you will. Uh, so while I have this list, I'm not going to execute on this list for, for some time until I get all those. But as part of that, I was working on the pitch deck and, you know, finessing that a little bit and getting it to, to a better place. So, and all these different things, right? So kind of taking it a step at a time, you know, and one of the things that I also have to kind of think about in this you know, I try to I try to always kind of create things into smaller bite-sized pieces um, and not overwhelm myself. One of the things that I, I, I thought about, you know, some of these, like, let's say, production companies, you really need representation to get in touch with, with these companies. Well, I don't have representation, believe it or not, uh, you know, which kind of surprised a lot of people. I mean, I, I, I guess I could. It's just, you know, it's just... Again, it's part of that thing like, you know, I, I'm, for me, I, I like to be my own gatekeeper. And so, the, you know, I haven't needed a manager. Like, I've been able to do all the things that I want uh, without a manager and so forth. And I've always thought, yes, a manager could be helpful, but I've never felt the need for it. And so, you know, I never put in that work to get a manager. Well, in this instance, yeah, it would be beneficial to have a manager. But... You know, in lieu of that, I was talking with one of my other friends and his suggestion was, well, you could do a finder's fee thing. You know, if someone you know has a manager, have them submit it on your behalf. And if, if it goes through type of thing, then they get a finder's fee for it. It's like, okay, cool. So I, you know, not that I'm going to like actively pursue that quite yet, but just knowing that that is a solution to a problem that was going to be in my head and probably like, you know, uh, a thorn in my mental state or something like that, a splinter in my mind, it's good to know that like, oh, I have a solution for that. And so I don't have to worry about that. And, you know, again, when the time comes, I will make those calls and, you know, make that a thing. And it's very normal. So yeah, did that. Uh, you know, the other thing that I've been kind of continuing on is these animation tests. You know, I, I think... I've gotten it very close to what I like, but I've been working with my friend Jonathan Moulton. And one of the things that he pointed out um, in all of this was that the test, one of the tests that I did, slow, the slow motion footage looked really good in terms of being animated. Uh, the other stuff kind of looked like it just had a filter over it. And the difference, you know, what he pointed, and the good news is you're not just pointing something out, he's then able to interpret it of why. And what he said was because animation doesn't have blur, whereas film you know, has a motion blur. That's part of it, uh, part of the illusion. Animation doesn't. And so he said, you know, in order to make this work, it would behoove me to shoot at a higher frame rate to get rid of the, the blur. And I was like, okay, well, you know, short of, because uh, I don't have, I have a camera that can go 60 frames per second but it's not the ideal camera I would use. So I was like, okay, well, in lieu of that, can I play with the shutter? So if you've ever seen Save It Private Ryan, it's shot at, uh, I believe, a 60 degree shutter as opposed to the normal 180. 180 gives it a little bit more, more motion blur, whereas 
uh, where 60, 60 degree shutter gives it kind of a, a very, almost like not a choppy thing, but, but certainly, you know, you don't get the blur. And they do this with zombie movies, uh, 21 Days Later, I believe it's what it's called, you know, is, is very known for this and things like that. So I was like, okay, cool. And so I actually went to the extreme. I, I was like, how, what's the lowest I can kind of really get it? And I, I got it down to 15, a 15 degree shutter. So I was doing those types of tests and uh, yeah, that gets rid of a lot of blur. Now, when you go lower with that sort of shutter, you have to increase the light. But in, you know, in theory, the higher you go in terms of frame rate, you have to pump more light onto a set. And that's because you know, whether it's the shutter or, or the frame rate, it just means that there's less time that each frame is exposed to light. And when you do that, it's gonna take a lot more light uh, to hit the, the, the frame in order to you know, see it properly, right? So, you know, that's, that's, that's the drawback, but, but the, the positive is obviously that we get the result that we want. And again, just another thing in terms of, yeah, doable. Um, and it, it's really cool. Like uh, a week or two ago when I was, you know, I was, I was looking into animation companies that could do this and I was talking with them and so forth. And, you know, this is all a new process to me. And I looked at it uh, and was speaking with them of like the process and, you know, just the possible estimated budget. So we can kind of figure this out. And, you know, realistically for, let's say, an hour and 40 movie, it was going to average anywhere between 200 to 500,000 just for the animation side. I was like, oh, whoo. So, uh, you know, that's kind of why, in this sense, we had to create a DIY solution. And the good news is we did. And I, I think I talked about uh, this, but, you know, instead of, you know, I looked to Photoshop filters because each, you know, in a movie, each, um, each frame is just a still image um, and sequenced out, it creates the movie. And so in that sense, it's like, okay, well, what if we ran it through Photoshop and you know, create a thing? Luckily, there's plenty of um, tutorials online of, of how to take a still image and you know, make it more cartoony. And you know, after a couple of tests, I, I found like the right settings for these, you know, for the for this technique, so it's not my own, but you know I'm certainly kind of expanding it because you know I've I've adjusted it, and instead of just doing it for an image, I'm applying it to you know an entire movie. And the good news is, you know, I thought like so so that's the good that's that's a good news, right? This, um, also, good news as part of that, I thought for sure doing it this way, it would be like four months of just having a computer render out an entire movie. Not so. I did a test of about a minute and it took about an hour and change, which is, you know, might sound like a lot, but you know, on Toy Story it took seven hours to render a single frame uh, for certain scenes. And, you know, they have server, you know, they, they have like the best computers and so forth. So for me and my like, for all intents and purposes, rinky dink computer, which is, you know, it's not rinky dink at all, but it's, you know, an average computer that you might also have, you know, a minute, let's say, let's, let's just round, round up, up, right. And say an hour and a half. So a minute and a half, a minute equals an hour and a half of render time. Well, you're only talking like, a, you know, a week and change to render out an entire movie. And it's like, oh, that's not, that's not four months. So that's great. Uh, and certainly, you know, I'm lucky enough. I have multiple computers. I'm lucky enough, you know, Jonathan, who I've mentioned, you know, he has a, an amazing computer. So we could in theory, you know, divide and conquer and, you know, take it scene by scene of like, I throw him a scene. I take a scene, you know, across multiple computers and we can get it done even faster. But I, I as I said to him, like, listen, if, even if it took just one computer a week and a half, that's, that's pretty freaking good. You know, you, I mean, animators like uh, Waking Life took 15 months to animate, <laughs> you know, so let's not, let's, let's not, um, you know, get too, too greedy and be like, oh, it needs to only take a week or three days or whatever, you know, week and a half, two weeks, like even if it was two weeks, like 
I'm good. You know, my expectation was four months of this. this. So, yeah, I'm very excited for that fact. And the good news, you know, unlike what I've been hearing, you know, when we when I've called these companies, this is free at the cost of a computer. It's, you know, I can get this done. And that's why when I talk about the train leaving the station and, and going on its way, and sure, it's going to stop a couple of times. But like, you know, I'm moving forward. I can figure out these solutions. And people are either on board or they're not. And if they're not, that's fine. Uh, so that, you know, that, that's kind of been a big thing. And then the, the last aspect, which is also kind of the biggest aspect, is uh, I spoke with John Comerford yesterday. And we went over the script. And overall, it's one of those things that this is definitely the most ambitious thing that I've done. Uh, both in terms of, you know, obviously like technique, but but also just the subject matter. And what's in my head is just not fully translating onto the page. And so we really kind of went over that. And, you know, we, we I think we did like two and a half hours. And, you know, really kind of got down to the nitty gritty of how to, how to tackle this. And so, you know, it's interesting, like uh, it's something like this, you kind of, yeah, uh, an artist life cycle, you certainly get to a point you're like, oh, I, you know, this script is, you know, I, I was like, oh, I, this script is close. I know it's not perfect, but I think I felt it was close. And now it's a little bit less close than I initially anticipated, but certainly solvable. And so it's in that sense, what I'm going to do is kind of redraft an outline. And, you know, the good news is I don't have to, I don't have to like reinvent and create new things. Because I have the script and, and overall, you know, the scenes and so forth work. Um, but I need to re-outline it in terms of motive. So that way we can then redraft the script based off of that. And I think really, even like scene by scene, I have to really define, you know, each character's uh, goal in that scene. So that way it's clearly spelled out. And then, you know, just kind of sticking to that as I write it. And part of it is... You know, for me, maybe there's this aspect, I, I mean, I pretty much think there is this aspect where I, I, I don't want to come off like spoon feeding the audience. And so there's certain things that like just ex, expose wise might just need to be outright stated that aren't. And, you know, as my friend John was saying, like, listen, there's, you have so much of this other stuff that's in there that every now and then they just need signposts in order to, you know, kind of know exactly where they are and hitting something on the head a few times is not the world's worst thing. You know, that's not necessarily spoon feeding your audience. That's just giving them the ability to actually comprehend. So I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, I've got to, you know, unfortunately, or if, I mean, I say unfortunately in terms of time, um, but you know, the good news is there's never been a deadline for this. And, you know, I'm gonna, I, I want the best script possible so I, uh, that way I can make a compelling movie. And so, you know, I gotta, I gotta edit the script. And so all this other stuff in, in terms of the marketing and so forth that I've, I'm kind of talking about, in some sense, we'll have to take also a back seat because of, you know, I gotta get the script there. And, <coughs> excuse me. I'm only, you know, I'm the only one that can really get it there. So, yeah, gotta, that's what I got to do. Now, I mentioned that there was two things, right? So that was kind of the one thing, and obviously a lot of uh, subsections to that. The other thing, <laughs> very simple, um, I have a friend who did a short film, now, short film is one of those things like it can be like two minutes or it could be theoretically 55 minutes. So he called me, hey, can you can you help me edit this movie? And I was like, okay, when you say short film, what are we talking here? About 25 minutes. Okay, cool. So um, the exciting part is, uh, you know, I'm not going to give the details um, because it's, it's a very early project and things like that. Plus, you know, I don't, uh, other people are much more um, kind of holding on to the thing. Uh, you know, versus 
I, how I like to talk about things, which is, you know, that's their prerogative, that's their project. So I won't go too far into it, but, um, but the point being that, uh, yeah, um, in the coming weeks, I will be getting to edit my friend's uh, short film and kind of looking forward to that. Um, it's going to be fun. You know, um, I haven't seen the footage yet, but I did see the script and the script is great. Uh, and, you know, I, I value him as a filmmaker and looking forward to, yeah, to collaborating on this one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, that's kind of what I have for you in terms of the creative stuff that I have. Obviously, um, there's, there's life stuff and things like that. Um, just, I think that, uh, you know, in ways that we all are dealing with things, um, heading into the holidays and so forth. Um, all I can kind of really say about that, um, that I would encourage you is have grace with people. And secondly, for yourself, whenever you catch yourself complaining, uh, try to think of solutions. I know it's easier said than done, but um, it's a worthwhile exercise because it, it allows you to take back some power versus thinking that the world is just running your life, you know. And the good news is, even though I'm not expanding upon it here, I've done plenty of episodes. Like if you look up, you know, my 21 day complaint challenge, uh, or actually, well, it's technically called the 21 no complaint day challenge, right? Uh, and other things, you know, I've, um, if you're really curious, there's a great book by um, uh, A.J. Jacobs called Thanks, uh, Thanks a Thousand, which is all about kind of how to harness gratitude into your life through practice. And, and you know, his thing was he literally wrote a thank you card to everyone responsible for his morning coffee, truck drivers, the baristas, uh, you know, the farmers, the factory workers, like every single person and, and it just really, you know, opened his eyes to how grateful he really should be for just as simple as his morning cup of coffee based on the number of people responsible for it. Um, so yeah, you know, and I'm gonna, I'll, I'll talk about kind of this and, and other lessons and, you know, especially as we draw onto the holidays more and more, but, um, but today I just want to kind of stick to the creative stuff. Anyway, that's what I have for you. Thank you for joining me. I truly, truly appreciate you having done so. I hope there was some good takeaway for you. And if you have any questions, by all means, please ask. It can be about anything that I talked about or anything I didn't talk about. You know, just ask away in the comment section or hit me up on social media at Phil Sweetek. I would love to converse with you. Thank you and hope to see you next time.